Hi, we're the Huge Movie Fanatics here on YouTube, and uh, we have a request from Vider Films. Yeah, a second request from Vider Films here on uh, YouTube. And we are going to be uh, doing the requested video review of Black Christmas, the original, what, 74? 74, I think. 74 Black Christmas. Uh, which, funnily enough, the day that uh, we got that request, uh, I just happened to watch it having borrowed it from a co-worker. Uh, so, like, it was just kind of crazy happenstance. Yeah, you told me that when I got here. I'm like, whoa. And <laughs> it's one I've always meant to see because I, I like slashers, and it's one I've meant to see ever since sixth grade. I went through a period where I was hardcore into the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street films, and I was like, I'm going to see all of these people's movies, every one of them. And uh, <laughs> that obviously never happened, but uh, John Saxon uh, being, appears in this movie. Being these people's being the cast. That yeah, everybody like, like, yeah. like everybody from the cast, like all the major players from the first movie, I was like, I want to see every one, and I think I saw probably like four outside of the Johnny Depp movies, <laughs> maybe. Every episode of 21 Jump Street. <laughs> <laughs> I did start watching 21 Jump Street. That show was fantastically bad. Anyway, off, off topic, Black Christmas. So we decided, um, I decided I was going to watch that, and um, I finally got it from a coworker. <coughs> and uh, so here is our here we go. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, please. <laughs> um, well, the opening started off like just fantastic. It, it was sort of the precursor to Halloween in a lot of ways, where it started from the killer's point of view. And I think, uh, like in Halloween, it works very much as like the sort of like shot at home kind of quality for the uh, uh, in the killer's POV. Whereas uh, this one sort of seemed to like have a little higher budget, but I like the interaction with the hands crawling up the I, I think I think the cameraman was able to wear the camera on his head or something, so he yeah. was actually the one crawling up. That was very cool. Yeah. And whatever lens they had for that shot. Yeah, it, it was it was really kind of cool. It looked kind of rounded. Or, yeah. Uh, it was like weird. Yeah, it was very very interesting, and I was like sucked in immediately. I'm like, ooh, this is cool. And, and then the. Yeah, and the breathing, the slow, uh, the slow breathing, and um, I also really liked uh, Margot Kidder. She's uh, oh man, she's a she fantastic great, actress, man. and she was the best thing about the movie, hands down. Uh, I thought, thought was Margot Kidder's uh, performance. There just wasn't enough of her, really. Every time there was a scene, and then you saw her, really, yes, she had to do it again, and every scene was cool. Yeah, or it was funny with her in it. Yeah, um, but outside of like the opening couple scenes it just sort of lost me and um, I just it, it failed to sort of suck me and there were parts that I kind of liked uh, the first killing was done all right it was uh, uh, like fantastically creepy the only thing that I, I, I really liked about that killing was the sucking of breath and like that just stayed throughout the movie <laughs> yeah, I was just like, yeah. <laughs> I was this? like that's kind of that I thought that was kind of neat um, uh, little things like that. Uh, there were touches that really worked for me, but um, you mentioned in our Halloween uh, Rob Zombie review you didn't like all the swearing and stuff like that, the needless swearing. Oh and yeah, so the phone calls. The, the phone call. <laughs> well, I think movie. it was only the first one. The first one, but it like completely, like that just ruined the rest of the movie oh, did for that me. Do it for you? Yeah, I was just like, I'm done, I don't want to watch this anymore. But I kept, I kept with it and I watched it through to the end. Which the ending was kind of ridiculous, but I, the, another thing. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, the senseless vulgarity I did not appreciate in the movie. Like it just didn't seem right and fit even with the rest of the movie a, a whole lot. And then the whole like abortion aspect thing of the movie was just I was a little out of place. I thought I don't know. I just wasn't blown away by that aspect of the movie. <laughs> so I'd give the movie. I'm gonna go with one and a half. Uh, the, for it, like mostly for production value in the beginning, especially uh, the lighting throughout the movie was pretty good, uh, and the cast was good. But especially Margot Kidder, she bumped it up. Uh, bumped up my review. I, half I was, a star. Or I, what? Yeah, half a star. I was tempted to go with two just because of her, but I'm gonna go with one and a half. Okay. So. Well, I uh, I thought that I I never seen it. I saw it. I got it for three dollars. Uh, the DVD used at Half Price Books this summer, um, so I just seen it this summer, and uh, I like I love horror Christmas horror movies, and this might be one of the first one of the first ones. And the thing about it is, it's just like Halloween in a way, where I mean, uh, it doesn't 
it just happens to take place around Christmas and it doesn't really have anything more any more Christmassy other than that to say unlike some of the later movies like uh, Christmas Evil and Silent Night like Deadly Night which are very much themed which I think we'll do probably next month if yeah, we can hopefully get together before you know um, which are much more Christmas themed Black Christmas is just a, a scary tale that happens to take place around yeah. that time but I, I like I like that I love Christmas lights just in general yeah. in life and I love them in movies um, I like the, the cool you know it's Black Christmas um, for me is gonna be I, I teeter-tottered I'm just gonna go three stars basically one of those stars is for atmosphere I mean mm -hmm. Um, the atmosphere in this movie, I just love atmosphere in movies, especially old movies. And the first shot, the title shot of that house with the Christmas trees, and it, it's got a Christmas song in the background, and then that font of Black Christmas. You know, That's like, what caught me, yes. too. Yeah, oh yeah, the beginning I just, is like, I was just oh like, God, man, why man. haven't I seen this? Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, and then Margot Kidder comes down, and it's all, you know, she's like, oh, what's the door doing opening it? And the guy you know it's gonna walk up the thing and it starts off like really really great what ends up happening is it's kind of like I guess you, in a way I sp you spend the whole movie kind of like okay you know nor normally a movie sets up like that and you and then you wait for it to start going and Black Christmas kind of never really starts going <laughs> no. it's weird it's how I it, did it kind of it just exists the whole time in a weird way I mean even spit on your grave seemed to have more of you know, a beginning, middle. I don't. I don't think beginning, middle, and end is necessarily key or crucial. But I guess that's the wrong way to put it. So I spit in your grave. Almost had more of a it had an focus. Arc. Yeah, I guess arc is a better word. Whereas Black Christmas is just like, all right, it starts, and this is just the events of I don't know how many days, maybe two Couple days, days yeah. which is fine. And you know, I guess it's fine. You know, because you know, I do have a kind of problem with movies that are like, you know have this plot and we got it we got this and we have to overcome this I do tend to like movies that just that just exist this one it's just it's this one really this is a really good example of just a movie existing and, and, and not too there's sure there's no purpose whatsoever yeah. at all the only movie. the only thing that uh, <clears throat> saves it is it, it, this 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 impeccable sense of I mean like the, the cast is great and that, that the, the house lady or whatever you call him, Mrs. Mack, I thought yeah, was fantastic. Could. And always finding, you know, there's like three separate stif scenes where she pulls a bottle out of the something and like... She was a fairly good ad-libber too. I, I got the feeling that she was ad-libber oh, like yeah. when she went up into the attic and she's like, I don't know why I'd be looking up here about it. <laughs> like, yeah. that's clearly the actor just being like, this script is shit. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. And she dumps her bag and look, look, talking to the cat, look what you made me do, people like that pissed me off. You know, the cat didn't make you dump the bag. Yeah. But uh, it, it should be mentioned that, you know, Olivia Hussey from, I haven't seen Romeo and Juliet, yeah, but after seeing heard. Black Christmas, I think I'm gonna. Um, the only thing I'd seen, other thing I'd seen her in is Psycho 4, which by the way, even for being older, God, she's sick. I mean, she's even sexy now. Wasn't she in uh, It, Stephen King's It? Yeah, but I didn't see it. You didn't see It? No. I mean, I don't know if she was in it or yeah, not. Yeah, she's in it. Well, I started seeing it back in the day, and I was like a two I I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> on to Black Christmas. So Olivia Hussey is, is very... I wonder if Ty West, you know, when I watch this, I wonder if Ty West, you know, was a fan. Because a lot of it, to me, maybe not a lot, but the, the, the overall thing of it reminds me of, like, House of the Devil and, you know, mm -hmm. um, the house and, and stuff. So I don't know if he's a fan of this or not. Because that when I first saw it, that's what I thought. I wonder if this is, like... I'm uh, actually not a huge fan of her. Uh, you don't really, oh, I'm just a fan of her. Uh, well, for, like appearance. Her appearance. Yeah. <laughs> she, what, I liked what? her. Uh, the one movie I liked her in was Romeo and Juliet. Like mm -hmm. I did see that. She did. She's good with Shakespeare. And, like, but uh, no, I just, just I, I just like that. Yeah. It's okay, kind of like, she is kind of like uh, uh, Jocelyn. Sorry, Jocelyn Donahue from uh, not Heather. Jocelyn Donahue from House of the Devil. It's more that's, like that sounds good. yeah. It's more like uh, just the appearance, and she's like ooh mama, you know. And also uh, oh, Kier Delay from one arguably. From for my money, one of the best, and most amazing motion picture achievements ever, which is 2001: A Space Odyssey. Keir Delay, the David Bowman, he's in it. Which I always thought that that role. He's done stuff since 2001. And I always thought that that role 
was his, and he could have just retired after that because it's like everything he's done after that, even up to more recently, just straight to you know video B movies. It's just like just you know you're not going to top being in 2001: A Space Odyssey. But his, you know I think you're right. The uh, <laughs> the movie didn't know what the hell it wanted to do. It almost makes you wonder if they just winged the whole damn thing. And the, you know, the, looking back on the, you know, obviously they tried to, of course, paint uh, Keir Delay's character as the possible killer with the abortion. I think that's why the abortion was there, because otherwise, because you had to give him a reason as to why he could be a suspect. Mm -hmm. the, um, so, uh, yeah, so that's, so that's that. But I, atmosphere wins me over for this movie. Like I say, it, it, it technically not... As as filmatically goes, it, it's really it has a sense of know-how about it. I love the house and all of the the dark wood, just classiness of the house and the Christmas lights and stuff. I can't remember if I ever had anything else to say, but it's not really a movie for kills. I think there's only two on-screen <laughs> kills. The second of which I like better with the hook. Do you remember that? Where the the Baby, old where yeah. the Mrs. Mac p p puts her head up in yeah. the attic and sees the girl and then. The guy's got the hook yeah, and throws it. <laughs> yeah, and presumably gets her. I completely her in the... forgot. I knew she, yeah, she yeah. got it, that but was, I didn't that remember was how. A better, a I forgot kid. about that. I think it was the you know the second of I think only two kills yeah. on camera in the movie. But Black Christmas for me is going to be three stars because of the atmosphere. I love the Christmas themed horror movies instead of because there's so much Christmas. Uh, on the other side of it, you know, like Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street and all that. So it's fun to see. You know, people. There was a scene where there's carolers outside, and Olivia Hussey's watching them, and Margot Kidder's getting killed during the caroling. And I think the music, you know, the singing carries over through the killing, and that's I love that because it's so ironic. And so, you know, I don't know what they were singing, but <laughs> she's getting it with the glass unicorn. We'll probably spike. have much more Christmas themed either horror or action. Well, kind of yeah. Because I want to touch on oh, yeah. the Lethal Weapon. Lethal weapon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so hopefully we'll be able to get together um, like next month in yeah. November and we'll do like just Christmas. I'm, I'm not so much interested in Christmas Christmas, but Christmas horror and Christmas action. <laughs> so I don't know. I think that's about it. We're kind of pressed for time today. So three and a half for me and what one and a half, half for you. Black Christmas 1974. Uh, check it out for, I mean, the atmosphere is great, and, and Margot uh, Kidder, yeah. it's funny as all hell, mm -hmm. and John Saxon's great. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really <laughs> mention him. Okay, <laughs> wait, let's, let's pull back from the, the No, I was like, I watched it because of him, and I didn't really yeah. have anything to say about him in the movie, like, that was, oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was the summary of it, like, I wanted to see well, it because it, of him, and it's just, just like, he's just he does the exact same role, like, ten years earlier in this than he <laughs> does in Nightmare on Elm Street. Street. So, anyway, okay, now that's we're going to push forward again, and uh, you guys have a good one.